All right, well, let's just get into it. Uh, Dragon Lee uh, signed with WWE, and he reports to to NXT. Right, in a couple weeks. I, I don't know if it's January or, or, or it might be February, but essentially very soon they announced it. They basically, this, the, the deal was made a couple of weeks ago, but they were told to keep it quiet, and they wanted to make the announcement after they won the tag team titles, which is a very interesting thing because they beat a, you know, he, he pinned, a, you know, uh, an AEW star, you know, and that was part of the deal. And, um, you know, um, I mean, Tony Khan was aware of it. Um, I'm sure that if this was reversed, that that never would have happened. Right. Um, you know, I mean, WWE, I mean, we've, already, we've already seen with WWE, um, you know, I mean, like with, uh, you know, when Al Alberto, you know, was, was signed, um, you know, he wouldn't go back. I mean, you know, they wouldn't let him go back and drop the, t the, uh, the championship or anything like that. You know, they're not going to let one of their guys get pinned by somebody from another company. But um, the gist of the deal was that... Um, it was time for him to make a move. He could not go back to New Japan Pro Wrestling, which was his home and where he wanted to work originally and where he'd been working for years, along with CMLL. CMLL uh, got rid of him um, because he worked the uh, PWG Battle of Los Angeles a couple of years ago. So they wanted nothing to do with him because he was on the same show with AAA talent. Um, they told him not to do it. They told him and Cavernario not to do it. Cavernario backed out. He did not. Um, he figured he had Japan. Um, Japan used him because they had a contract with him, but they would not renew the deal because New Japan is loyal to CMLL, and he was then working for AAA. So he was out of New Japan, even though they liked him. It was just one of the political moves. So he was kind of without anything. And, um, you know, he was working in Mexico. There's not really a lot of money in Mexico. Um, he had uh, him and Drillis to go ahead and try out with WWE. And they wanted him, uh, AEW wanted him as well. And he was talking to various people. And uh, it's not, you know, it's it's funny because I see people going like, oh, he's going for big money and he's going where the money is. And his deal is not, I mean, it's a bigger money deal than Mexico, but it is not a, any kind of a big money deal. I mean, he's getting NXT money. He's not getting main roster money. Um, the situation is, is that, you know, he talked to people. And I was asking several people, you know, a lot of different people, um, that, you know, what, what's better for me, AEW or WWE? And the feeling, which is funny because a year ago, I think most of those people would have said AEW for sure. But, in fact, they said WWE, and um, I don't know that they're wrong. I think that, you know, the one, the one thing is if, if you look at the current scene right now, if he went to AEW, you know, he probably would go in with um, probably more money. Um, not appreciably more, but more money. And he would probably be used less. He'd probably get very frustrated because there's, you know, as we've said, I mean, look at all the people on that roster and, and they don't have enough television time and they don't do enough angles um, or any angles or anything like that on their streaming stuff uh, to put people like that really to work. So he could make a little bit more money and probably not wrestle a lot. Or he could go to NXT where he, you know, he's a super talented guy, and he could be a focal point over there, and I think that was the better thing. I mean, it's a lot better for him. Some people are going like, you should go to the main roster, and of course, look, he's got the talent for the main roster. He's as talented as anyone in WWE, um, but he does know English and he's small. And even though Paul Levesque is more open to people like that than Vince McMahon would be, the reality is is that. Someone who doesn't know English is probably not going to get a main roster push. If it comes to the main roster of WWE, I don't know that he fares any better than... He probably will fare better than an AEW because the reality is, is that AEW has, you know, I mean, I mean, he's super talented, but they have Ray Phoenix, they have Pentagon, they have Bandito, um, and they have other flyers, you know, the young flyers, you know, not as good as him, but their own guys, you know, whether it's Jungle Boy or Dante Martin or, or the list is endless, you know, I mean, I go down a giant list. And, you know, if, as, as far as that goes, um, WWE main roster doesn't have a lot of guys like that. At the same time, you know, historically, I mean, we've seen 
with um, Mas Dorado, who was Grand Metal League, super talented guy, and what happened to him in WWE, which was nothing. You know, he basically did nothing for a couple of years. Couldn't, you know, I wouldn't say couldn't wait to get out because he didn't really want to quit. He, he had times he wanted to quit, but, um, you know, he, at that, you know, he was making main roster money, which is a lot different, and he couldn't make that anywhere else. And then eventually they let him go, and, and he's uh you know waiting to do you know he's doing new he's not doing a lot we didn't do new japan in the united states probably go back to cmll when he legally can do that as far as like visa issues and things like that that he's trying to wait out but um so it, it's a weird thing because for a guy as talented as he is he really it's it's it really was a a seller's market so to speak for wrestlers you know a year and a half ago um you know especially a guy with that kind of talent but really now it's like everybody's got so much, and even a guy as talented as Dragon Lee, you know, um, as far as main roster stuff goes, I don't know how well he would fare with, with either company right now. Not that he's not as good as other people, but just they've got so many people. Um, and so it was a really weird thing. I mean, so, um, but that's the basic gist of it is that, uh, you know, he, um, you know, in WWE made a big deal of the signing and everything like that. And they do want to go to Latin America. Uh, they, uh, you know, he thought, you know, he did an, an, an interview basically saying he hopes he could be the next Rey Mysterio. And, um, you know, I mean, he's got super talent, but the problem is, is that the only reason Rey Mysterio ever made it in WWE was because he'd already made it in WCW. And because the talent in WWE, a lot of the talent in WWE vouched for him, really wanted to put him over and things like that. And I don't know that um, starting from scratch without a lot of allies, um, it's not the same situation. I mean, sure, does he, you know, look, there's lots and lots of luchadors right now that are coming to the United States that have great, great talent and, and uh, you know, coming up with their commander, Armies, um, the king goes, you know, going to be doing independence. Um it's not like five years ago when, when Dragon Lee was a super unique talent, but he is still a super talent. So, um, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, but in NXT is probably for right now for him as far as being able to wrestle, being able to, to get a push and things like that. It is the best place for him in the United States right now, and it's the place that he chose. I guess people are going to wonder, what about Roosh? Did he play any role in this? Um, I'm sure that, uh, you know, I mean, Roosh has really, you know, Roosh has really, uh, um, you know, tried to work, you know, well in AEW. Um, yeah, it's his brother and everything like that. But, um, you know, I mean, did, did he want him in AEW? Probably, yeah. So, um, you know, but, you know, there was a lot of, a lot of things going on. Factors. So a lot of factors going on. Um, what are we, uh, right you know, now? one of the one of the things which which is which is, which is notable as far as the timing of all this goes is, like with Bandito, WWE's interest in in Dragon Lee came when they found out that AEW put this guy on television with no contract. So it was kind of like we can swoop in, you know. I mean, um, and. Uh, you know, that was one of the things. So, that, you know, it wasn't like they, you know, they came they they came after him after that deal. And right after that, you know, pretty much, um, you know, he was signed, but he was signed a couple weeks back. And um, so that was the, the, the deal. But that was the catalyst of it was them finding out that, a, that, that AEW had put a guy on television with no deal. Granny, let's do the wrestling report. What do you got today? Put your laughing gear on. <laughs> My laughing gear. <laughs> What is uh, wrestle a load? <laughs> and Brian Hawks. I, I don't. That's what got paid after his show. I don't. I don't know what wrestle load is. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait a minute! It's wrestle Cade. Oh, oh well, that oh makes more sense. Where'd Brian go? <laughs> He's recuperating. <laughs> He's broken. You broke him, Granny. <laughs> Sheesh. I have never. I have. 
If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.